I want to talk about Sidney Blumenthal's business interests in Libya that underlie these hearings. He was going to make a fortune. And she was smoothing the skids for him to make a fortune, which indicates that some of that money was going to flow outside of Sidney's hands somewhere else. I think you can put two and two together. Sidney Blumenthal is one of the worst people in the history of the United States of America. In any other time, he would have been indicted by now. Sidney Blumenthal is a cohort of George Soros. Sidney Blumenthal is a cohort of the Stalinists in Media Matters. I have good evidence, although I cannot prove it, that Sidney Blumenthal's fingerprints are all over my having been banned in Britain in 2009. I cannot prove it. I can only allege it. I'm not going to talk about being banned in Britain. As the only member of the American media who cannot enter Britain, it's Michael Savage, and I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of it. Apparently, they only permit Islamists to enter Britain right now. Only Islamists need apply, or Syrian refugees need apply, but I cannot go there. But the fact of the matter is, there's Hillary Clinton sitting there with a the plum, the cat that ate the cream, those cheeks, the surgical cheeks. They only got to her twice today. And I saw this woman, when she was finally having to answer something that she was uncomfortable with, fall apart. You saw the face literally collapse in front of your eyes. That... Uh, Communist Chinese assurance that Madame Mao look, that Madame Zhu look, disappeared only once or twice. When she was no longer in control, she went apart. You have to understand something about power. They don't let anyone near them. They let nobody near them. They're insulated by buffers. 30, 40, 50, 100 layers of buffers. Nobody gets near them. This is not Britain where they have to answer the opposition party directly as they do in England once a week, where even the Prime Minister answers the opposition party without uh, a script. We live in a controlled dictatorship in this country, unlike anything you could ever imagine. So these hearings are our only look at a fragment of what democracy might actually look like. And so it's an important hearing because if they don't bring her down, and I don't think they will, she is likely to be the next president of the United States because all the money in the country wants her to be the next president. And I have heard through inside sources that it, that includes the owner of Fox News. That includes all of the minions of Fox News. They are all being told, they've all been told to go soft on Hillary Clinton, go soft on illegal immigration. Do not attack her because she is the chosen one to those who own and run the news corporation of a uh, news corporation. Every once in a while, we get a sliver of democracy. And today is one of those rare days where we're actually getting a sliver of what democracy might be like if we lived in a country that was truly democratic. And we see a hearing that's going nowhere, frankly. Now, I'm not blaming Trey Gowdy. I'm not blaming some of these incredible Congress people on the committee. They're doing the best they can given the constraints and given the fact that the way these hearings run is that Democrats and Republicans get equal time. And, of course, she has her protectors, the buffers on the other side. But what was Sidney Blumenthal doing there? Who is he? Because this is going to come up again. And my guess is, I'm making a guess now, he is her greatest vulnerability right now. The whole world is now saying, who's Sidney Blumenthal? Why did his name come up? What was he doing uh, with Libya? Why was he advising Hillary Clinton? He could reach her with direct emails and no one else could. What, what was he doing? What did he have to do with the overthrow of Gaddafi, if anything? And I believe that he, she's going to throw him overboard in the very near future. It's not going to happen today. My guess is that there needs to be a head on a platter. It's going to be Sidney Blumenthal's head. They're going to throw him overboard. He, they're going to cut him loose, and they're going to blame him for the whole fiasco. And then she'll walk away from it unscathed. It's just the way the political uh, political game called blood sport works. Somebody's going to pay for this, for what she's going through, and it's going to be Sidney Blumenthal. Now, Breitbart, Patrick Howley, say that new emails show that Hillary Clinton helped Blumenthal's business interests in Libya. Blumenthal has denied through his lawyer that he was on the payroll of the military consulting firm Osprey Global Solutions, which wanted to expand its business in Libya after Gaddafi was killed. And they say this. Blumenthal pushed on at least one occasion to get funding for the group's projects and promoted to Hillary Clinton, a Libyan government advisor, that Osprey was trying to win over for private dealings. The new emails reveal that Blumenthal and the other two sources feeding Clinton intelligence on Libya were all acting as, quote, 
honest brokers for Osprey Consulting to get a government contract in Libya, and Clinton was willing to help them out. Now, who is Osprey Consulting? Hmm. Well, it's a new one. Osprey is headed by former General David Grange, former head of Delta Force, Blumenthal wrote to Clinton. And he said, quote, Osprey will provide field medical help, military training, organize supplies and logistics to the TNC. This is a private contract. It does not involve NATO. The TNC wants to demonstrate that they are pro-U.S. They see this as a significant way to do that. They are enthusiastic about this arrangement. It went on and it said, Tyler, Cody, and I acted as honest brokers putting this arrangement together through a series of connections linking the Libyans to Osprey and keeping it moving. Blumenthal wrote, referring to former ACI agent Tyler Drumheller and Cody Shearer, Blumenthal's top two sources for the intelligence he sent to Hillary Clinton. Is this too obscure for most listeners? I hope it isn't. Always follow the money. Never, ever forget the primary rule of politics is about power, and power is always about money. That's all it is. If you study gangs, whether in America or elsewhere, you'll see that they're driven only by one element, money. And money translates, power translates to money. It's no different than the government. Power equals money. It's that simple. Clinton forwarded the email to her State Department aide, Jacob Sullivan, instructing Sullivan to read the email and discuss with me at hotel. She replied to Blumenthal, assuring him that she would call him tomorrow for follow-up. And she said, just, just met with TNC again. That's the new government of Libya, I believe. But sign no contracts. Thanks, Clinton wrote. But Sidney the Snake Blumenthal kept sending Clinton briefings promoting Osprey Global Solutions, according to Gowdy. This is the subtext of the hearings today. Watch Sidney Blumenthal's star fall is my guess. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. The Godmother Part 1. She has plenty of buffers to back up her statements. The question to the American people is... Is she winning or losing? It's clear she's winning. She's outplayed everyone. By having delayed this hearing until after becoming a candidate for president, Hillary has been able to convince the left-wing media and the majority of the left that this is a political attack. The average moron out there, meaning the general public, merely feeds off of the media, and they're already tired of hearing about emails. Even Bernie Sanders was told to use that as a laugh line. And they've tuned out. They don't really care about Benghazi, whether you know it or not. This is a big thing to the political world. It's not a big thing to the average person. And they're probably more interested in uh, a transgendered reality show than they are in Hillary Clinton's uh, attempts to explain away why she let the ambassador and others die. And I believe the people on the right, who probably had the best of intentions to begin with, have now had their teeth removed by arguably one of the most efficient political machines of all time in all human history. And I fear that Hillary Clinton has outplayed the right, the media, and sadly, the American people are the big losers. And I think she's coming off fairly well in this hearing. It shows on her face, except when some finally trap her, you see the cat that ate the cream expression leave. And of course, the Democrats under that uh, creature from the uh, this is in Congress there, Elijah Cummings, oh, the uh, frightening, look desperate in an attempt to make this look like a witch hunt. Their statements, their questions are weak, their defense of her is overt uh, and, and so clear. And Hillary's prepared for every question. The reality is she's not looking that bad. And the media is going to portray this as an attempt by white males to attack a poor little innocent woman. That's my opinion. Now, there's a shocking email that was released. You can find a link to it uh, at the top of the Drudge Report from, I think it's from the Daily Caller. Hillary told her daughter, Chelsea, that the terrorists, that terrorists were behind the Megazi attack the night it happened. This is a shocker. So not only does she lie to the American people, but this poor, innocent, clean as the driven snow woman, Hillary Clinton, lied to her own daughter in an email Dated September 11th, 2012, it was released today at the hearing to her own daughter. 
Hillary Clinton, the honest woman, asserted to her own daughter that an Al-Qaeda-like group was responsible for the terrorist attacks in Benghazi, revealed just today during the testimony to the House Select Committee on Benghazi. The email was revealed by Ohio Rep. Jim Jordan, and it shows that Clinton knew early on that the attacks, which left four Americans dead, was carried out by terrorists. But as Congressman Jordan pointed out, Clinton and others in the Obama administration already begun crafting the story that the attack was spontaneous, the attackers were motivated by a YouTube video, many Muslims found offensive. In the email released today, cited by Rep. Jordan, Clinton responded to her daughter Chelsea, who emailed under the pseudonym Diane Reynolds. You hear this? Her daughter had a pseudonym, Diane Reynolds. Quote, two of our officers were killed in Benghazi by an Al-Qaeda-like group, Hillary wrote. But shortly before the email, after it was revealed that Stevens had been murdered in the onslaught, Clinton implied that the YouTube video had served as a motive. Clinton said in a statement shortly after Ambassador Stevens' death, some have sought to justify this vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material posted to the Internet. Well, you know the rest of the story. The Obama administration continued for days after the attack to lie and claimed that the YouTube video entitled Innocence of Muslims had sparked protests which turned violent. Critics of the administration's handling of the response to the attack asserted the YouTube video was used as political cover to protect Obama ahead of the election. Congressman Jordan today compared Clinton's disparate positions, asserting that she knew the truth, but insisted on casting some blame on the video. Okay, you got the picture. Oh, she's lying. Lying. I'm shocked. Okay. Are you shocked that Hillary's lying? Are you kidding me? There's more you can read on your own if you want to link to the Daily Caller and Top of Drudge. The ins and outs of it. You know, it's all too political for the average person. The average person's getting a haircut, going bowling. Sitting on a lawn chair. I don't know what people are doing in the country, but they don't care. This is political insider stuff. And the Democrats are going to say it's poor innocent Hillary, the woman, being attacked by evil white males. And we spent too much money on it. Just as uh, China in the early 1900s had been imprisoned by the opium dumped on the people by the English with the American uh, merchant seamen delivering the opium, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's maternal grandfather, Mr. Delano, was a great uh, drug smuggler actually a drug transporter because it was legal to bring opium into China. He made his fortune on the whaling ships, bringing them to China, the opium. And they uh, enslaved all of China with drugs. And then what happened around 1908, 1910, I don't have my, actually 1910, Double Ten Parade, because I've gone to the Double Ten Parade in Chinatown many times. They celebrate when the martial artists rose up and overthrew the corrupt, the corrupt chiefs of China, the warlords, and took China back from them. Now, of course, this country's now been drugged by the government medico complex. Children are drugged with false diagnoses such as ADD, ADHD. And they're put on crippling drugs like Ritalin, Adderall, other drugs. They're, drug they're turned into little drug addicts. They are on drugs literally from infancy now. Then they go on to illegal drugs. Children are drugged to death in this country. The adults, what, pop, what percent of the population is on drugs, legal or illegal? We are imprisoned with drugs in this country. We need a double ten parade, but I don't think we're going to get it. And now we see Madam Clinton, right out of communist China. The one question that was not asked would be, Madam Secretary Clinton, are you aware how your Arab Spring plan caused Europe's refugee crisis? Haven't heard it yet. Now, how could Gaudi not have put two and two together? They're directly related to this whole Libya thing. But she is above the law. She's part of the oligarchy. She's part of the one-party system. She has been anointed president. That's all there is to it. What do you think? Am I wrong? Am I right? KSFO, Daniel, you've watched the hearings. What do you think Hillary's performance is like? How is she doing? It's a fascinating performance. Uh, reminds me of... Chairman Mao, the communist leader in China's wife, Jiang Qing, which there's a lot of similarities between those two ladies. And I'm very afraid that if Hillary really get elected, America will become China. Daniel, do you have experience with the communist Chinese government? Yes, sir. I came from uh, China a long time ago, mm. an international student. Um, I understand uh, the monopoly of government in China, and I also understand the system of Democratic Party. 
um, Hillary really reminds me of Jiang Qing, who is Chairman Mao's wife. 